Hey guys, today I'm going to show you an interesting newer method for backing up your Dreamcast VMUs. This is what I consider to be the fastest, easiest, and most versatile method for quickly transferring like individual files. There are some better methods, um, and but they may be a little bit harder. For example, if you get a Dreamcast SD card adapter, you just pop in a burned disk, and you can back up all your save files at once pretty quickly. But you need a burned disk, you need an adapter, you need an SD card, you need, you know extra software to transfer the files, it's a few more steps. This is what I consider to be the quick and easiest method. All you need is essentially one device and some form of a controller. A few downsides to this method though, you can't copy anything that's copy protected and this adapter is a little on the pricey side. This adapter is actually $45, which don't forget yet, don't forget yet. It's also a controller adapter. So basically if you had, you know, not enough Dreamcast controllers for a party or your friend is weird and they refuse to use this really pretty cool controller, you can let them use this, and they can use their weird PS4 controllers or whatever. Um, and like I said, for this method, we'll also need some form of controller. I'm going to be using the Hori Commander. We don't need this just yet, but you will need this for a later step. Uh, this adapter will support, you know, all the modern controllers, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and all that stuff. Most of them it supports via Bluetooth, but a few you need to use a USB cable for. Like, Xbox 360 can't pair with wirelessly, but most Bluetooth controllers it will work with. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the tutorial. Um, again, have your controller ready. I think USB makes this next step, few steps easier. But basically, all you need to do is buy this adapter and plug it into your Dreamcast. So, again, this does not require any mods. This does not require any boot disks. All you need is any region Dreamcast and just the ability to get to the main menu. So once you're at the main menu, go over to files, which is in the top right. And then you should see two things plugged in. Your first Dreamcast controller with whatever memory cards are in. And on the right, you see the brook. So if you go to the main memory card, find the file you want to copy. And as you can see here, um, we have a few. Okay, so like Sonic Adventure can't be copied. The Chow part can't be copied. Soccer Wars works. MVC works, Crazy Taxi works. Like I said, most save files work, but occasionally you'll find one that doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna copy over my Blue Stinger saves. This is from the Japanese version of the game. So go to the game, copy, boom, start copying. It's literally that easy. And now your save files are backed up. So if anything happens to your VMU, you still have it. That, that is step one, getting the save files off the VMU. So step two is actually just as easy. Step two is getting this adapter onto our computer. Um, and unplug the adapter. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's actually two USB ports on this thing. Micro so you can connect it to your PC um, for transferring, but you can also use this as a controller receiver for your computer for some reason. I wouldn't really recommend that. But anyway, so connect this via a micro USB cable. And this has to be a actual data micro USB cable. If you got a super cheap cable, if you get your headphones or whatever, that might be charging only. But it's very easy to tell because when you plug it in, you should hear the little jingle on your computer that says the device has been connected. And this is where we need our controller for because you need to have a controller connected in order to switch this to VMU transfer mode. So um, the next thing we're going to need is, you know, like I said here, plug in your controller, USB, or use this button to pair it. If you're using Bluetooth, either one works. I think USB is easier. And on Brooks' website, um, I'll have this linked in the description, we're going to need the VMU um, transfer software. So there's a manual, and then there's a PC and Mac version of the software. Download the PC version. You also want VMU Explorer, which I'll have a link to below. This is an, click this button to download it, and it's in an RAR format, so you need something to open that. You can use WinRAR, you can use, I prefer 7-zip, you can click this button for that. But again, once you have a way to open RAR files, you're fine. So back in the software, um, this is going to be as, once you've extracted the main archive, I put VMU Explorer in the same folder just because it's easier. You can put this wherever you want. Um, there's also a Dreamcast VMU Tool PC zip file. So you'll want to extract this too. When you open it up, click on this program, and here's where we need a controller. Uh, when we first connect to our PC, like I said, it's in PC adapter mode. If you want to use a PS4 controller on your PC, there's easier methods, but I digress. Get your controller ready, and then we're going to be pressing up and start. So just hold these down. Or if you're using a PS4 controller, it's labeled options. So up and options, or up and start. You hear your controller, the light flashes, you hear the jingle, and we're now at this menu. So this program is pretty bare bones. All it does is let you dump everything from your um, adapter or overwrite everything on your adapter. So be very careful when you're using this. It's all or nothing. So we want to basically export. So we click save the PC and then ask us for a folder. Um, it's going to give us some file name rec uh, recommendations down here. I would say always use .bin because it works with everything. 
Um, but you can always change it later very easily by renaming. But it, just for convenience, just go for me. We're going to name it dot bin. So let's just call this out dot bin. Easy to remember. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure it ends in dot bin for convenience. Wait for a couple seconds for it to dump. And we're done. So now we have out dot bin. So technically you're done. If you want to stop this video at six minutes, you're done. Keep this on your computer. Um, you can even import an emulator if you know how. But you have your save files successfully backed up. They're safe. So, okay, let's go over to here. We're going to open up VMU Explorer now. Find where you found it. Extract it. And then run VMU Explorer.exe. So this will let us actually browse what's on our um, VMU. So you can export it. You can rework it. You can do whatever you want. Um, but I'll show you why we're using this in a second. So go ahead and go back to your folder where you put out.bin or whatever you called it. And hey, look, here's our save files. We got the brook icon. We got um, blue stinger file one and file two. So we're technically good. If you just want to be able to, this is how you test it. So what if you want to use this on an emulator? All right, so here's the thing. If you're using RetroArch, you need to find the Dreamcast, the DC folder. So wherever RetroArch is installed, you want to find a system folder inside the RetroArch folder. And inside a system folder, if you've ever played any Dreamcast games on, I think, Flycast, you should have a new folder called DC. Inside this folder, if you've saved any games, you will have a VMU save A1, which is controller slot one, first memory card. Um, and this would be where you want to save your stuff. So, for example, if you if this if you do not have any Dreamcast VMU save, like you've never played any Flycast stuff, you'll need to make a DC folder inside of System, and you will need to save this here. So I'll show you how. File, save VMS, and then you'd want to browse to this folder. So you know, and you would specifically want to type in VMU underscore save underscore A1 bin. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to copy and paste, but you guys can type it manually if you want. And hopefully I won't accidentally overwrite. And it says it already exists. If you see this, do not overwrite it because you will lose your emulator saves. Um, if it does not ask you, that means, hey, this is your first time using a VMU on your Dreamcast emulator. Great. Go ahead and save it. I'm not. So if you do have a VMU save, and again, only follow this step if you need to import some stuff. I'll show you what I mean in a second, sorry. Um, you want to open up the VM, the, um, what is it called? The A1 save with VMU Explorer. And I'll explain why in a second. Just follow up for a bit. Um, open up. Browse to the folder. So, again, system folder inside of your RetroArch folder, not your documents or anything, RetroArch folder. And we want to find VMU save A1. And again, you'll only see this if you already have a memory card. If you save to another slot, like slot 2, slot B, slot C, so whatever, you can open those. But I'm just going for save slot 1. And as you can see here, here are all my emulator saves. Um, you got incoming, crazy taxi, soul caliber, all this stuff. You want to make sure that you basically, you can click between your memory cards. See, here's my out memory card and here's my VMU, which uh, save A1. So this is RetroArch. This is the adapter. So you can easily tell by the icon. If we want to transfer these save files to our emulator, all we have to do is just copy and paste. You can click on the one you want, right click, copy, then click this other memory card, right click, paste. Do it for both files, copy, paste, and here we go. They are now on our memory card. So now all we have to do is save, save VM, save changes, yes. And there we go. We have our backup still with just our copied save files, and we have our new, um, we have our emulator save file, sorry, our emulator VMU bin file updated with the two new files. So let's go ahead and test them out. I'm going to go ahead and boot up the emulator real quick. And again, these, I didn't have any blue stinger save files on here before. They were only on my real Dreamcast. Let's go ahead and try out the emulator. Let's go ahead and run it. And again, if you are using an emulator for a game you have, you might want to make sure you're on the right region and maybe some version differences. But again, it should usually be fine as long as it's right. I think the only thing that really matters is region. So, okay, we have Japanese Blue Stinger booted up. So let's go ahead and load our save file and see if they have anything. Slot one, and there it is. So we can go ahead and test it by loading it up. And that's it. So our save file is up and running and we're playing on an emulator using our save from our actual Dreamcast. So yeah, like I said, quick and easy. The more you want to do, like transfer it to an emulator, adds a few extra steps, but the process is pretty simple. So now we can exit out of this. All right, so now I'm gonna show you really quick how to copy over a save file from your virtual memory card back to your real one. 
So as again, you have to go to VMU Explorer and load up your VMU save underscore one. And here are all my save files. We have Soul Calibur. And as you can see here under copy, it says protected. But interesting enough, you can still copy it back to your Brook adapter. So paste this in. And hey, look, it worked. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to copy this back to our actual VMU, but it's still usable on our Dreamcast by just simply plugging in this adapter and saying load slot two. So that's an alternative, but again, it's not perfect. Um, there are some tools you can use on the Dreamcast, some disks you can burn that allow you to remove copy protection, but that's way outside the scope of this video. So let's just say, um, let's load up Sonic Adventure. So we'll take Sonic Adventure, go ahead and copy it, and then we're going to put it on this, because Sonic Adventure is not copy protected. As you can see here, copy, OK. So now we have out.bin. Um, if you want to keep that backup clean, the out.bin, we can save it as a separate file with save VM as, and we can call this, I'll make sure you put it in the right folder. I want to keep everything in one folder, so I'm just going to find this Dreamcast VMU tool. I'm copying and pasting, but again, you can manually browse with the same stuff you normally would. So I'm going to call this in.bin save, and we're good. So now again, make sure the Dreamcast is in VMU format. I would suggest reopening the program, but you can probably just leave it open from before. I'm just going to reopen it. And now we want to do load from PC. And remember, this will take everything on our adapter and completely remove it and replace it with whatever you load. So we're going to load in.bin. Now everything on our adapter is being erased and we're overriding it with in. So one last thing I'll mention while this is loading up is you'll notice there are two DCM files in here. These are blank images. So if you want to format your adapter, you can run 200, you can flash or load from PC 200B DCM. If you want to be able to back up more files than normal, you can do load from PC and then load up 240B. They're the same memory card, they're both blank, but 240B actually has this little trick you can do that unlocks an extra 40 blocks that you normally can't access in the VMU. So if you're trying to transfer a bulk amount of files, you can try transferring, you can try loading up this file. Uh, 240. And I'll show you like load and then 240. Um, but again, that will wipe out anything on your virtual memory card. So now let's go back one last time and turn on our Dreamcast. And if we go over to file, load up Brook. As you see here, Soul Calibur can still not be copied. Again, there's a way to get around this, but we're not going that. That's not part of this video. Um, we have Blue Stinger still, and here is our Sonic Adventure. So copy. And there we go, start copying. And there we go. So it's just, it's literally that easy. Um, this video was a bit on the longer side than I wanted, but I wanted to cover absolutely everything. So I'll try to put timestamps in there for whatever part you're interested in. But that is how you would transfer a save file to and from an emulator. And I even showed you how to use it from your RetroArch save file. So hopefully that was enough. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. But again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial. Uh, bye.